Um, so I, I'm an urban designer uh, living and working here in Auckland and I guess uh, I've contributed uh, an essay to this issue called Why We All Need to Get Along or Learn to Get Along um, and I guess that uh, reflects some of the things that I've been thinking about as I've been uh, going about my work and my uh, life uh, in this city uh, since I returned from London in 2010. And, um, I think it was uh, Winston that uh, you know said that first we shape uh, buildings and then they shape ourselves, and I think that that's true of cities as well. Uh, and so I'm quite interested in you know how we have shaped the city, uh, shapes not just the way that we feel about uh, the city, this city, uh, but also how we feel about each other. Uh, and so I'm interested in this kind of politics of urban geography, if you like, in Auckland, and. You know, most of us actually do lead uh, quite atomised and isolated lives in Auckland. We live in suburbs that are almost perfectly graded by house price and perhaps worryingly uh, age, race, income into almost perfectly segregated communities. And I think that our obsession with houses and house prices, and if you look at our friend in New Zealand Herald's almost daily commentary on those things. Uh, it really tends to emphasise the things that separate us rather than bring us together. And so, you know, in that kind of context, it's almost as if, as we move about our daily bubble, the forecourt of the service station or the checkout in the supermarket might be one of the few times where you ever actually rub up against anybody uh, different to yourself. And yet, strangely, Behind the net curtains and the steering wheels of Auckland, there is actually massive diversity amongst us, and we're told that uh, Auckland is in fact one of the most diverse cities in the world, and yet it's just that from the way that we live and how far apart we live from each other, <coughs> you wouldn't know that, and we don't feel that every day. And so I think that it was interesting uh, for those of us that lived uh, here in Auckland during those six weeks of the Rugby World Cup in 2011, to notice uh, how we used the city differently, how we moved about differently, and how we felt about where we were during that time. Uh, and actually, to me, that there was a real palpable kind of sense of during that time of what it actually felt like to live in a city that had one and a half million people in it, uh, and for starters. But also that in that we came together and we felt like actually uh, you belong to something that was bigger than just you and your own individual life. And to me that's really encouraging and that that was actually uh, what city life and city living should be about and that's kind of why we uh, are all here. It's not just about you and, as an individual. And so when I'm feeling optimistic, uh, <laughs> I think I have, there's a strong sense that that sort of feeling and that growing up and maturing as a city is continuing. Uh, in a lot of the good things that we're doing, and this is Auckland Anniversary Day last year, I think, down at the Wynyard Quarter in that new waterfront public space, which is one way, I think a significant way, uh, that we actually uh, come together. And so I guess I've, in, in, in the essay I've said, so what does this say about us uh, in terms of how we live, where we're at now, how that's changing? Uh, and I think that the consequences of, of the way that we have chosen to shape this city in the past uh, and the suburban lives that most of us lead, uh, live keeps raising its kind of ugly head uh, every time we start debating something in this city. And you know, if you look at the unitary plan in terms of how we're going to uh, develop and grow the city in the future, debates about how the council should spend uh, our rates funding, and I'm sure motorway tolling will be another one of those issues. Uh, and I think my favourite quote, which I which I put into the essay around these kind of issues, is, is a woman from uh, Belmont on the North Shore who was quoted in a in the Metro magazine article about uh, unitary plan growth challenges, saying something along the lines of, "Well, the reality is that uh, we are uh, special here, and, and more special than everybody else. We've worked very hard uh, uh, to live in this street, and we don't just want anybody else living here." Uh, and so. <laughs> You know, if you're asking the question, uh, why should we care? Well, I think that, that quote, you know, that <laughs> is actually part of that. But I think we also should be asking some of these questions around 
uh, in Auckland, what's happening with our city, where might this all lead? You know, what if we have a hardening uh, between the haves and the have-nots? Between the inner city and the outer city? Between the blue blood Aucklanders of old and more recent arrivals? Over half the people that live in the city were not born in this city. And I think nearly 40% of people that live in the city were not born in New Zealand. Now that can be an incredibly uh, powerful and, and positive thing for the future, uh, but it could cause some pretty serious problems if we, if we get that wrong. And so, you know, we can look to Paris and, and, and Bonneville, or even more closely things like the Cronulla riots in Sydney, about, you know, where some of these things might lead. This is Paris, it could equally be Auckland if you start to think about that difference between uh, how people live closer into the city and how they live further apart and that the more and more that those get different then what is it actually that uh, unites people and brings them together or feels like there's actually one, a sense of one city. So what should we do about it? This image here was um, part of a project that I've just recently completed doing which was uh, 100 Days, 100 Ideas for a Better Auckland which was part of the wider 100 Days project uh, that many hundreds and, and, and I think initially thousands of New Zealanders and others uh, signed up to do over the last three months. And here I'm asking, are we better off together or apart? And I think the diagram on the left is, I think, is how many Aucklanders see themselves, which is that, well, I live here, and I know some people that live here, and I know some people that live there, but I don't actually join all that up to add up to anything more than just that. But actually, if you do join the dots and you feel like you live in, in something bigger, that's actually what city living and, and, and being urban is about. So what should we do about it? I think that we, uh, we need to keep going with uh, public transport and public space. And these are actually the, the forums of, in a city where you do brush up against people different to yourself, that uh, breed tolerance, that provide social exchange. We need to keep doing these things. This is uh, the Easter Fair at, at Queen's Wharf uh, last year, I think, and I thought this was really interesting uh, strolling down here, and it was almost like uh, at Christmas Day where there's all these uh, bunch of people that didn't have anywhere to go and they were looking for something. The city was completely deserted, but you came down here, uh, and, and these people, to me, it was another one of those moments that reflected the growing diversity of Auckland. So providing these opportunities, art and culture and public life, things that tell our stories, things actually uh, that you can do for free. I always say, how much time can you spend in Auckland without spending any money? That should actually be a measure of, of a good city. We're getting better, but we're still pretty bad. <laughs> Starting new traditions, things that, are, that actually bring us together from, from all four corners of the city and from all walks of life. This is the Lantern Festival, which is one of those things that has definitely become a tradition. And keeping existing ones as well, because I think uh, in Auckland things change so quickly and we and, and at such a pace that we um, kind of forget uh, any sense of doing a, a sort of tradition or things that we do each year and over time. And, and, and that maybe they need to change and, and, and reflect the change in Auckland. This is the Christmas parade. Uh, or straight after the Christmas parade, and I always think, why do we just shove everybody out and close? And we've had the street closed, and then we try and push everybody out. Why don't we just keep the street closed for the rest of the day and be like a Christmas shopping day and enjoy everybody being there rather than sending them back off to their houses? Uh, you know, food. Everybody loves food. This is, you know, and you look at the explosion of night markets across all from now. That these are actually really encouraging things uh, that are happening. And so I think, you know. If we recognise and talk about the value of these things and keep doing these things, then, then hopefully these things will actually keep us in good stead uh, in the new Auckland. Thank you.